Formulas in Notion can be a really useful tool to help you find out different pieces of information, but they're not the easiest things to get your head around to start with. In this video, I'm going to explain some of the most common uses that I have using formulas in Notion, and we're starting right now. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. To start with, you can't actually use a formula in Notion unless you have a database, so we're going to create a database in a table view. Now I'm going to add some properties that are fairly typical when using Notion formulas. So I've got a select property that only allows me to select one of a list of things, so I'm just going to put them in as numbers. Then you have the multi-select property, which allows you to put in multiple select options. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, and then one. And then I think the most common property used in formulas is a number property. So one, two, three, four. So now I'm going to create a formula property. If I hover the mouse over formula, type in the name and then push enter on my keyboard, it will automatically create that formula property with the name. Now when I go in to create the formula, if I push on the property, it's going to give me the exact property that I've just put in. So essentially it is just a copy. Then if I ask it if it is equal to a number, so if we ask if it's equal to one, that's a question. So it will come up as a tick box. It's either true or it's not. So you can see the row number one is ticked and two, three and four are not ticked because they're not equal to one. However, if we do that same thing for the select property, it doesn't quite work because the select property isn't a number, it's a text. So when we ask if it's equal to one, we have to put the one in speech marks to turn it into a text string. Now, essentially we're asking the exact same question, but it's to the select property. Now I don't want this one to show as a tick box, so I'm going to ask it as a question and put the question mark. Then I want the first answer to be yes, and because this is text, I'm going to put it in question marks. Then the second answer, separated by a colon, is going to be no. Again, I want it text, so I'm going to use question marks. Now you can see, does select equal one? Yes, no, no, and no. For the multi-select, again, it's slightly different. Even though it's still a text string, just like select, when you put in the property, it will give you everything that's in that cell. So instead of asking if it's equal to something, unless you want it to equal every single entry, you need to ask whether it contains the thing you're looking for. So you can put contains at the beginning of it, and now because we're looking for a text string, we put the one in speech marks. Now it's looking to see if the multi-select contains one. So it doesn't matter if there's more than just the one, as long as one is there. Another example of using the contains function with a multi-select is you can actually ask it a question. So ask if it contains two, put a question at the end. If it does, put two. If it doesn't, put zero. And you can change those outputs to what you want. Say it does contain, it doesn't contain, yes, no. You can choose because you're turning it into a text string. And you can see at the bottom there isn't a two, so it's showing zero. Now something that I think is really useful, knowing how the multi-select works, is the multi-select actually works the same way as a relation output property. So those of you that understand what relations are, you'll still get the same thing. So everything is separated by that comma. So what we can do is use the replace all function. And essentially what that does is it replaces the first thing you're asking for and replaces it with the second thing that you're telling it to replace. So here I'm asking it to replace all of the commas with an empty space, so absolutely nothing. So what it's done is it's got rid of those commas. Now this is going outside of Notion formulas and more into JavaScript regular expressions, but essentially if you put a square bracket, a top hat, the comma, and then square bracket, which is going to select everything but the commas. So it's essentially replacing all of the inputs with nothing because that's what you're telling it to do. So you now have three commas, but because there's always one less comma than the amount of things in there, you just add one. And because we've added length to the beginning of the formula, it's going to count how many things are in that multi-select column. So you can see we've got four, three, two, and one, and that formula will work exactly the same if the multi-select is a relation property. I recognize that last formula was much more of an advanced use case. So if you want to learn more about formula basics, check out this video over here and I'll see you there.